Welcome to the video lesson for 11.3, Surface Areas of Pyramids and Cones. In this section, we're going to be looking at surface area of pyramids and cones versus prisms and cylinders. We're also going to be looking at surface area versus lateral area of each of these things. So the first thing we have to do is start off with some vocab. Um, I'm going to do some fill in the blank here. So the first thing we have is pyramid. A pyramid is a polyhedron in which one face, or the base, can be any polygon, but the other faces, which we're going to call lateral faces, are going to be triangles that meet at a common vertex. We call that vertex the vertex of the pyramid. So we've got this picture here. We have a face, which is called our base, that can be any polygon. But then all of our sides that are coming up, we call those lateral faces, they're all going to be triangles. And they meet at this point up here called a vertex. The next word we have there is altitude. The altitude is a perpendicular segment that goes from our vertex down to the base at 90 degrees. Okay, so then we have height. The height is very similar to what we just talked about. It's the actual length of the altitude. So whatever that distance is. The altitude is what we call the line itself, but the height is the length of that, the value which has been assigned to it. Now, in a regular pyramid, we have a pyramid whose base is a regular polygon. So we may have pyramids where our shapes are not regular at the bottom of, for our base. So we have regular polygon and whose faces, lateral faces, are congruent isosceles. Sorry, that's an S. Isosceles triangles. So we will always have isosceles triangles within a regular pyramid. And the last thing is our slant height. That is the length of an altitude of one of my lateral faces. So we need to write lateral face in here. Okay, so let's look at this picture. We've got the altitude here, so the value assigned to that is the height. We have a square base here, which is a regular polygon. You can see that all of these sides are triangles, as we mentioned before. However, because this is a regular pyramid, we know that this side here and this side here are going to be congruent, which makes these all isosceles triangles. Now your slant height, we have this piece here. The symbol we use for slant height is this curly little cursive L. You can think of it as the slant height. That's why you use an L, not an S. S we use for side. So make sure you're using that little L. That means slant height. And that's going to be the altitude of one of your lateral faces. So this triangle here, if I draw the altitude, that would be your slant height. So here's formulas you need to know for pyramids. You have lateral area and surface area. The lateral area is just going to be those sides. However many triangles you have, that's going to be your lateral area. But we have a formula that we can use for this. It's 1 half PL. Remember, P is for perimeter. And L is for slant height. So one half perimeter times slant height. That's going to give you your lateral area. Now your surface area, it's a similar concept to what we've been dealing with with um, prisms and cylinders. We're going to take our lateral area, but we need to add the base in. Now in a pyramid, we only have one base which is why we're just adding B. That's the area of the base. So let's remind ourselves of that as well. So we are taking the lateral area, whatever we get from this formula here, and we are adding the area of the base. So let's look at an example. Okay, so we've got surface area. That's what we're looking for. And we know that surface area 
in a pyramid is equal to lateral area plus my base. But we also know a formula for lateral area. That is one half of my perimeter times my slant height. So what we can do is we can find our lateral area, then add our base in. In this case, your base is this polygon right here. It is a hexagon. And when we find the area of a hexagon, we also know the formula for that. It's one half a p. We have to think back to when we dealt with this. A is the apothem and P is the perimeter. Okay, so let's go ahead, let's identify some of this stuff and start plugging values in. So step three says substitute values into formulas. That's what we need to do. Start identifying what is my perimeter. Okay, so if I know this piece is six, I know that this is six, this is six, 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 six. So I have six sides each of which is six inches long. So I know that my perimeter equals 36 inches. So I can plug that into my formula. I can also use that over here to find the area of my base. I'm just gonna kind of multitask. As long as I know I need it, I'm gonna plug it in. Okay, and then also I'm looking for my slant height. Now remember, your slant height is going to be kind of like going down the side of the pyramid. It's the altitude of one of your triangles. So this value right here, the slanted line, that is my slant height. So my slant height is 9 inches. That tells me my lateral area. So if you're asked for just your lateral area, all you have to do is take one half times 36 times 9. You should get 162. 162 inches squared because that is my area, my lateral area. But I have to add my base into that because I'm not just concerned with my sides. I also need the base of that pyramid. And we were almost done with that over here. All we have to find still is our apothem. So looking at my apothem, oh, they even gave me that value. That was really nice of them. We don't even have to find it. So the apothem is this piece right here, 3 radical 3. So plug that in. Now I need to use my calculator again. Okay, so I plug this into my calculator. I have 1 half times 3 radical 3 times... 36, and I get the area of my base is 93.53074 inches squared. And I rounded to like the fifth decimal place, so that's okay. Remember, you don't want to round a lot within your problem because it makes your answer less accurate. So now I have to add that back to my lateral area. So when I add that to 162 from the lateral area that we found earlier, our total surface area is going to be 255.5. Now it doesn't say in the directions how to round. Typically it's going to be to the nearest tenth. My units are inches squared. So then you go ahead, you've got this next uh, you try problem for you to do and bring it to class. Okay, we have some more vocab here because now we're moving away from pyramids and we're looking at cones. A cone is a solid that has one base and a vertex that is not in the same plane as the base. So it's going to be this ice cream cone looking thing. The base of a cone is always going to be a circle. In a right cone, the altitude is a perpendicular segment from the vertex to the center of the base. So this is all very similar so far to the pyramids we were just looking at, 
except now we have a circular base instead of some polygon. Again, we're going to see the same thing. The height, which is h, is the length of the altitude. We just saw that. And this curly L, we still call that the slant height. And it's still the distance from the vertex down the side, but now it's technically from the vertex to a point on the edge of the base or to some point on that circle that is your base. So you see this picture here. We've got our cone, our circular base, providing our radius. Our height here is the length of the altitude. Our vertex is at the top. And then the slant height here is where we have a line segment from the vertex to some point on our circular base. Okay, so here are the formulas that are going to come in handy. Because we have a circular base, we have to consider that when we're looking at the area of the base as well as the perimeter. Before, we saw that we would use our perimeter and our slant height in order to find our lateral area. Well, our perimeter of our circle is going to be the circumference which is 2 pi r. So the perimeter of a circle is 2 pi r. Let's write that down. Times our slant height. But if you remember, the formula we learned before was 1 half of our perimeter times our slant height. Well, 1 half times 2, these cancel out. So that's where our pi r l comes from. So the lateral area is going to be pi r l. Our surface area, then, is just adding the area of the base. Now remember, because we have a circle being our base, we're always going to use pi r squared here. We're only going to have one pi r squared because we only have one base in any cone. Okay, so here we're looking to find the surface area of this cone in terms of pi, so we're not actually going to calculate that out. Now we know for surface area, that's equal to our lateral area plus our base. And we also know that lateral area is equal to pi r l. And our base is a circle, so we need to use pi r squared.